Hey everybody, this is Kite Altera here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys my finished formicarium. So it has been weeks and weeks of me trying to get this thing done, and it is finally done. As you guys can see, this is control, it has a little blinking light here, and you can see this is the cool side, it's cool and wet, and this is the dry and warm side. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as you guys can see here, um, this formicarium has a top that is made of plexiglass and is sealed with silicone. And it looks similar to the other formicarium that I showed you before. The only difference is, of course, that it has a lot of condensation here. And it's actually computerized. It has some extra components. So here, this is going to be the transfer tube that I just take the top out of. And I actually have other tubing sizes that I'm going to make with this so that if I have to move the ants from one location, one container to another, I can easily get them there via this tube. And when not in use, it's capped. Here, this will be the feeding tube that I'm going to use. I went ahead and just capped it because I don't need it for right now. Um, that would be, you know, for feeding. And the, uh, this can be used for tubing as well, either or. But the main part is that it is capped and the ants cannot get out of here. Here you guys can see I have a ventilation uh, hatch or a ventilation hole, whatever you want to call it. So what this is is actually a hole in the plexiglass that is lined with fiberglass. Uh, it's mesh fiberglass that is rated for insects as well as some stainless steel. And what this does is ensure that there aren't any ants that can eat through this, uh, this mesh layer. So I have two that are inside of the formicarium and I have two that are outside. So how I layered it was mesh, then silicone, then I have the other layer, which will be the mesh uh, steel, the metal, and then another layer and then silicone. So it's just alternating like that. And what, like I said before, let's just make sure that the ants don't chew through because first they have to get through the fiberglass, then they have to get through the metal that's under it, and they have to keep doing that, which makes it very unlikely they can uh, actually escape, especially when you consider the metal that's on the inside that they have to bite through since insects don't typically, aren't typically able to bite through uh, metal. Over here, you guys see the relay. This is the JB Tech 8 channel relay I did a review for before. Uh, see, as you can see, uh, this is actually connected to two components, one being the heat lamp that I'll show you guys in a little bit, as well as the water pump, which allows the, you know, this entire form of carrying to be hydrated. Here you guys see the actual computer that I'm using. Now, this is actually an Eligu uh, Micro or Nano. I forget the name. It's either or. Um, and this is powered via USB connector to a uh, power supply with that is uh, 12 volts and I believe it's a couple of milliamps. So it's more than enough to operate this computer. And here is the actual module for it. You can see the white flashing light. That is actually for a temperature and heat uh, sensor. And the green light just shows that the temperature is within range. Now, it also has a buzzer connected to it, as well as a clock module so that I can time specific events to occur. And just as a function test, I will go ahead and I'll bring the camera back so you guys can see the power on self test. Alrighty guys, so if you look inside of here, you can actually see the heat lamp. This is a low output heat lamp. Um, the max temperature here is actually um, 110 degrees. Uh, so that ensures that it can get pretty hot in here, but since it has inside of here, which it's hard to see with all this condensation, but inside it actually has the DHT22 temperature uh, module, which I told you before can tell the temperature, the heat index, the humidity, and Fahrenheit and Celsius. And it goes out of a tube that is covered, actually, absolutely swamped in silicone, and it comes out here to the actual sensor module. So when you're doing a power on self test, all I have to do is click this reset button and you'll see it cycle through everything. Uh, for the water, if you look very closely, I'll probably do it two or three times, you can actually see the water start to come up and then it draws back down as it's deactivated. So I'm gonna press the button and you'll see it alternate.
All right, so what it did is cycled through all the LEDs to show you guys that it worked, as well as the buzzer, the white LED, which tells the temperature. It can actually, it tells you when the, it senses the temperature from the DHC22 inside of here. It actually activates these two relays, and one is for the heat lamp, the other one is for the uh, water pump. So I'll do it one more time, just in case you guys didn't see the water pump. And then now it's going to take the reading and it displays it. So what I did uh, for this, I know it looks uh, quite a bit messy. Um, this is my first time doing it. So future iterations of this project are going to be a lot cleaner, a lot more neat. But I just want to show you guys how this is going, how this actually looks because it's complete now. The only thing that I wasn't able to do was have a fan mounted on here. And that was because I was having issues understanding the MOSFET that is used, which I'll discuss in a different video. But um, I don't necessarily need a fan because up here where I live, it can get pretty cool up here, which is why the heat lamp is a must. Uh, as far as cooling, it can naturally just cool as it goes. So the fan isn't necessary because it doesn't get that hot up here. Um, and if there's any kind of issue with that, then I still have to install the Peltier module, which will come at a much later date because I don't actually need a uh, Peltier module to um, get this, get these ants that will be inside um, to hibernate. And the reason why I don't need them to hibernate via Peltier module is because it gets so cold up here that it's unnecessary. So I'll just be reiterating it, uh, the cold temperatures. And if you can see here, you can see the outline of an actual burrito because I have a colony of workers, small colony, there's no queen in here. That's actually in here as a test to verify the security of this enclosure and so far I haven't had any escapes. I actually witnessed one ant actually make its way um, steadily to all of these different uh, places trying to escape and it was trying but it couldn't do anything at the end of the day. Um, I, there's actually one here that you guys won't be able to see um, that's actually crawling on the top portion of it. If you want to see a detailed overview of the formicarium without this condensation, um, I'll put a link in for the other formicarium design that I had that was not computerized. So the good thing about this is that I can easily program this um, Eligu microcontroller for certain temperature ranges. So if it gets too cold, and as in the previous video, it turns blue. If it turns too hot, it turns red. And when it's in range, it turns green, as you see here. And it still has the capability that I showed you guys in the other video, where as soon as you disconnect the DHT, it sends an alarm. All right, guys, so another thing I wanted to show you is how I actually got these connections to go into the relay. So I actually spliced this wire. I actually cut it. And then I got some solder, and I actually got this wire. This is wire that I purchased from Amazon. And what I did was just connect it to the relay. Um, I already have a description in the JB Tech 8 channel relay review how you actually go about um, working these relays. So just check that video out if you would like more detail. So once I put these together, they actually connect, they separate, and then they connect to these relays. If I wanted to, I can actually disconnect these and then just do whatever I need to do, just making sure that I reconnect them when I'm done, uh, when they're supposed to be in operation. And the reason why I do this is because of how it needs to be sensed. So when the temperature is too low, it activates that uh, low output heat lamp that I showed you guys. And when the temperature is too high, it actually disconnects it. So this whole project didn't take forever. Um, the hardest part was soldering all the items here on this uh, prototype board because I haven't soldered since high school. So it was definitely a bit of a learning curve. But as far as constructing this entire thing, as far as the uh, cutting the plexiglass top here, um, getting the silicone on, you can see I had a little bit of a mess here, but which is no big deal. Um, 
the biggest thing was just to make sure that I lathered silicone on here to make sure there was no hole for them to escape out of. And I tested it and everything works out perfectly. So this is going to be what I submitted to the USDA. I actually made a slideshow at first and then I just sent them a Word document that had the different pictures and descriptions of how this is going to look. Um, speaking of it, actually if you can look closely here you can see one of the uh, ants that I got. Uh, it's a carpenter ant I believe, some type. So anyway I sent this to the USDA and it's actually past state, it's actually at state review. So I'm almost done. The only thing that is left now is for the state to put in their air, their input and that'll be it. And then I need one last inspection apparently and then I'm done. So it's actually been making some progress. So hopefully by the end of this Labor Day weekend, I can call them and say, hey, what's going on? They can say, you are approved, Kite. And that would be amazing. So without further ado, guys, thank you for watching this video. I am so glad I am finally done with this formicarium. Uh, like I said, it took a little bit, but it's actually done. I have tested it and it works like a dream. Uh, you can look at the uh, previous videos that I'll have linked in this video so that uh, you guys can just see, you know, how I've been building up to getting this form of carrying made. In any case, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and I'll post on social media, different websites and whatnot. Um, and make sure you hit the bell icon because I will definitely have more videos available in the upcoming future, in the very near future, actually. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a very blessed day and a good Labor Day weekend. This is Kite Altera with Kite Talks About, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.